Morons in Maradon. I, I just off this title, I'm gonna love this. Like I just I love watching noobs play WoW and like just the, just the adventures. It reminds me of like when I was a noob in WoW. Well, I'm still still sometimes a noob, but like you know back in 2004 on my on my freaking Rep Paladin, just dying over and over and over and over. like it's just brings me the nostalgia. Episode was Let's all about world exploration, questing, getting our mounts at 40, and engineering. So today the primary focus is dungeons. He dating dungeons and lots of dungeons. By the way, I've realized that I hate these three minute prologues, so let's cut to the chase and stop beating around the bush. We activate the altar of the keepers and summon the stone men. Nice when you kill each one, they blow up. So any seasoned WoW veteran will hide behind the pillars. Personally, I chose to face tank every explosion, take aggro on the last mob, get our whole party wiped, and report Staya for toxicity when he called me bad. Then, we may have wiped again after someone riled up a mob of dark dwarves, after which, and you wouldn't believe this, we wiped yet again. The way I see so things, painful. no one's really to blame, we're all equally at fault here. <laughs> With all our might, we activate the Altar of Arcadeus, and I gotta be honest, this is probably the coolest boss thus far. Alderman is a sick dungeon, both thematically and in the sense that you need a sick sense of humor to design this fight. Arcadeus slowly summons these tiny useless stonemen one by one, and then suddenly when you expect it the least, two giant elite mobs zoom in and altercate our experience for the worse. After walking a moderate distance to be ganked- To be fair, he's level 41, bro. Like, 41 older man, like, even for a veteran like me. Like, bro, 41? Like, the, the boss is level 47, right? Like, uh, uh, yeah, you're pretty underleveled for this, I'm in dude. front of the entrance to the dungeon by a stun-locking rogue, uh, leading us to walk yet another moderate distance. It appears that the mobs have all respawned, and it is for this very reason oh, no. that World of Warcraft is by bastards and four fuckers. Anyways, this is how you're supposed to complete the fight. You actually don't attack him, you just drag him all the way upstairs. That way, it'll take ages for the elite mobs to reach you, and you can defeat Arcadeus in the meantime, ah, they as they say. Ah, they They don't, they don't say that. The adventure of Swap Wictus. You better believe I started questing in Farad. Wait, did he spell Maradon wrong on purpose? Isn't it? In the title, it's Maradon correctly, and here it's Mor Moradon. Okay. You better believe I started questing in Ferraris. I had to call you out on that. The soul is cool to. as fuck. In okay. fact, let me tell you about it. Like more Basically, oh, what happened okay. is that in Ferraris, okay. I made the executive decision to say, Man, fuck this shit. We're gonna do another dungeon. I teamed up with some players I met during a robot chicken escort mission in Tanaris. Along with my now level 60 friend Larry, our party was fucking stacked. Merely five minutes into Zolfrak, I acquired the best in slot gloves from my level. ka -ching! We rob some graves and fuck up some zombies. Then walk up this giant flight of stairs and execute the executioner. Free the caged folks, and now begins the kerfuffle. In this really dope segment that unlike most of the game doesn't just feel like standing and hitting, we defeat hordes of enemies, and That's after clicking. a drawn oh, out, hard fought battle, we emerge victorious. At which point the people we saved betray us, bastards. We make quick work of them, and move on to kill Uzlu and Ukor's sand scalp. Watch out for the snakes. Finally, we reach... I just realized he's he's using the Ravager over the Fiery War Axe. Is that... Maybe Swak Wictus wanted the extra AoE for the stairs? I, it's the end of Zulfarak, where Maybe? Garzilla emerges from the water. And with absolute conviction, <laughs> we smite him from this plane of existence. Our group was admittedly a well-oiled machine. Individually, we were fingers, but together we had joined to become a hand. There was not a single hiccup, and it was easily one of the cleanest dungeon runs thus far. All my party being mega overleveled probably helped, but I digress. Now, why did I go through the trouble of traveling to the southernmost tip of Kalimdor? Because 
By completing the Garzilla quest, I'm granted the Carrot on a Stick, which lets me move 3% faster whilst mounted. Vanilla WoW is monotonous and 15 years old, so I made the executive decision to diminish the game's lifespan. Then these trained World of Warcraft professionals taught me about a secret oh, jump. There's cool. one single pixel that'll allow you to get on the cage in Gadget Zane, leaving you just out of range of the Gadget Zane bruisers, meaning you're free to attack the Horde players with theoretically no repercussions. That is until the spot is taken over by these fine gentlemen who showed me how it's really done. <laughs> After dying to some pirates, I left Teneris. Then I yet again made the mistake of exploring new lands in search of quests. I made my way from Duskwood through Deadwind Pass, landing me in the Swamp of Sorrows, a name I would come to find accurately describes the state of affairs around these parts. Although the WoW Wiki said it was appropriate for my level, there's barely any quests here. The only noteworthy thing was a giant sunken temple, which happens to have a Horde player on it who rudely informed me that I shouldn't be in this godforsaken place. With all my armor now in the red and my hearthstone on cooldown, I made the journey back to Duskwood. Where I repaired my armor and flew to Manithal Harbor, where I met up with Larry, who taught me how to use macros. I made one single macro to switch Swifty into Berserker Shades and activate Berserker Rage, then decided that I fundamentally had the optimal setup. By the way, check out this glory shot of me and my tiger. God, I'm sick at this game. Anyways. I leveled my engineering to artisan level and crafted a handful of useful tools. You see, in WoW, your character has two trinket slots. And at the expense Excuse of a me. moderate amount of gold, engineers get access to devices that can circumstantially be incredibly useful. I made the Gnomish Shrink Ray, which makes my enemy tiny and weak. The Netomatic Projector, which captures my enemy in a net and the Parachute Cape that'll allow me to access unintended areas and get banned by Blizzard. These bothersome furries came up to Are me you, and you bothered me. They kept uh, asking all these questions and all this stuff. However, Larry made them disappear by layering me. Always a G. Larry and I started a fight pit outside Ironforge, but I had an ace up my sleeve. An ultimate move, if you will. If we're speaking in metaphors, which we are, I suppose you could say I had one in the chamber. I was gonna lure my opponent outside of the ring and trap him with my net, letting me win the duel even if I'm way lower level and undergeared. Sadly, the net backfired and I captured myself, <laughs> leaving me at the mercy of an absolute whooping. I had enough of PvP and ran Alderman again with this role-playing dwarf who would type Drinky every time he sat down to drink. We nailed the whole dungeon without a single mistake and Drinky was an absolute fucking god at this game. He taught me how to use the rasp emote. So this reminds me of when you're playing WoW for the first time, especially if you don't have Questy installed or Rested XP or like any of these add-ons that are gonna help you navigate through the game. It's and, and you're 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 complete you're completely new to the game. It's almost easier to kind of just run around doing absolutely nothing while you're in a group uh, or you're like in the world chat like looking for a, a dungeon group. And then you find a dungeon group and then you run a dungeon and then after the dungeon you kind of just go back to doing nothing until you find another dungeon group which could be like two or three hours later and that's pretty much what like like makes up leveling randomly running around role-playing cities leveling professions checking out new territory exploring the world maybe a quest here and there and looking for dungeon groups for many 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 hours to do a dungeon like once to gain like a couple bars or half a level of xp and then you rinse and repeat until you're level 60 which will take like many months that's what i did at least or just grinding mobs <laughs> i then won the roll for the treasure chest landing me a pair of completely trash bracers that i would go on to vendor for close to no monetary gain to summarize about 10 hours of my life even with pvp trinkets free action potions and a level advantage i still don't beat mages 1v1 in world pvp yeah, i happen. also still don't know if i'm enough of a man to level to a point where i'd have fair grounds on which to review wow classic and yes, That's I still Kim ninja cave. loot chests without rolling for them. It's worth it, I'm telling you. I make off like a bandit. Then I made a tailor turn my mage weave cloth into mage weave bolt, at which point Rashmak approached me with a dubious offer, with materials that I could purchase in the auction house for what I would describe as a compromising monetary setback. He would enchant my fiery war axe with a fiery enchant, oh, making it a yeah. fiery, fiery war axe. Do you know how powerful that makes me? I fucking love this game, man. 
I know it's a bit of a circle jerk, but despite all its flaws, this game is genuinely rewarding at times. But all these negligible pieces of information are benign compared to what I'm about to tell you. A few days later is the very moment in time wow. where I would cross paths with my soon-to-be new WoW GF. I met Emiri in Stranglethorn Vale. She'd been mailing me for weeks and had finally managed to find me. Considering the Solo Warrior leveling experience, she was a godsend. Together we completed nearly every single quest in Stranglethorn. Oh. After which we got E-smashed at 6am. <sighs> Gamer hours. What the fuck am I doing with my life? In an excited delirium, I decided to ditch Elizabeth for being disloyal and low level. It's entirely unacceptable that she has a real life. <sighs> and that she's not actively carrying me through the game. It was cute while it lasted, boys. Ah, rip Elizabeth. Miri, on the other hand, now that's a banging wow GF, let me tell you. Whenever I don't log on for a week or two, I get worry letters in my mailbox. Whenever I do <laughs> Answer, log in or please. go anywhere, she immediately appears next to me, ready to fight for my life or die trying. Always bringing gifts in form of potions and elixirs, wow. for she is an alchemist. Did I mention she loves killing horde players? And she called Larry a boomer for not revealing his age. She's perfect. Prior to this, Larry was my only real comrade in Azeroth. Now, there were two. Some would find it creepy that I'm logged in for less than two seconds before the DM lands. Jonathan, where have you been? Did you get my message? But I see this as the very Little level clingy. of dedication necessary to be a top shelf certified S plus five star WoW GF. Now I could talk about the Halloween event, how we got these horrendous dwarf masks, about how I ran Zulfarak again with a group of skeletons. But honestly, all those tales are benign compared to our journey to Maradon. Let's go, baby. I'm excited for the Destiny equipment. I had that back in Classic. That weapon is so damn cool. Now, experienced WoW players, it's more than honest, standing and hitting. I may look at that and think to themselves, it is. Moonglade, Winterspring, and Feralas. What in God's name does any of those places have to do with Moradon? Well, allow me to explain how I well and truly shit the bed and made a crucial mistake. Now I'll up and admit it. I fucking hated the mid-level 40 grind as a warrior. It basically boiled down to inefficiently questing in Teneris and Stranglethorn Vale or running Zulfarak and Alderman. No matter how you look at it, it's just cookie clicker with extra steps. So I was ecstatic to reach level 46 cause that meant I could run Moradon. I wanted to make sure to pick we... up all the quests for the dungeon so I looked them up on the WoW wiki. Huh? Many of them can be picked up in Desolus but there was one that I had to travel quite far for. I flew to Menethil Harbor and sailed to Darkshore, from where I went down into Ashenvale, the southeast London of Azeroth. From there, I went onwards up into Fellwood. You see, I had my eyes set on Moonglade, where I'd pick up the final Moradon quest. I run past this quest marker with perfect focus, knowing full well it's that it's more to efficient cave. to stay on the task at hand than do every quest I see. When I reach no, the Furbolg Stronghold, the I'm humbled yet again. It turns out that by default, I'm at war with the Furbolgs. Yeah, Considering the I can't even manage to fight any single one of them, clearly I'd have to find another way into Moonglade. Emiri joins up with me, and being the perfect WoW GF that she is, <laughs> she informs me that to ally with the Furbolg, yeah. I'd need to grind reputation. Funny enough, wouldn't you believe it? That's absolutely the quest I ran past earlier. By the way, grinding rep in vanilla WoW is very rewarding. 
It basically boils down, it's very complex, but it basically boils down to killing the same enemy over and over and over again. So now we start doing the Furbox dirty work, and apparently the only way to become friends with these savages is to win a territorial land war with their enemies. Are we even the good guys at this point, or is this indeed what weak cowards would describe as morally abrupt? I'm sure the lore told us, but let's be real, I installed Questy a long time ago. Easy Fuck clap. reading every quest in yep. this game. In about an hour's time, we managed to go from hostile to unfriendly, granting us safe passage through the stronghold. This was where my crucial misstep started dawning on me. You see, Questy showed absolutely no quest signs anywhere in Moonglade. After a quick double take on the WoW wiki, it turns out this is where the quest ends. It starts in Desolus. As a new player, <laughs> finding this out was very disappointing. Get the flight you path. see, every get the single path. other dungeon, bar none, has got their quests spread all over Azeroth. And for whatever reason, the only dungeon where I truly bothered to pick up every single quest and traveled, mind you, literally halfway across the world, is the one dungeon that conveniently has all the quests in the same place. I was thinking, what Maradon quest is in Moonglade? Like, I, I I know there's some turn-ins there, but what? which one starts there? Like, I was thinking that. Right next to the dungeon. It, but... Oh, boy. All right. Going here may have been foolish, but it was intelligent compared to my next move. You see, I boldly presumed that Moonglade doesn't have a flight path, seeing as the flight master I found was only for druids. Taking the Hearthstone would also be inefficient as it's set in Ironforge, like which is right? quite far from Desolus where we're headed. Emiri and I ride all the way back to the Furball Wait, Stronghold there, there and make our way path, through right? the end game zone Winter Spring. There definitely when is. we finally reach the flight path, I get yet another taste of the delicious first time WoW player experience. You see, I didn't have any connecting flight paths to Winter Spring, and therefore I wasn't able to fly anywhere. As it turns out, ha 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 ha, I'm laughing, ha ha ha. There is a flight path in Moonglade that's actually required to fly yeah. from Winter Spring. It just happens to be in a random location yeah. out in yeah, the woods okay, that no one would randomly run into. Yeah. So I go all the way back to Moonglade and pick up said flight path. There then fly to Desolus where I meet up with Emiri. And the best part was that at 5 a.m. our <laughs> odds of getting a party from Moradon were close to null. So I humbly come to terms with the fact that I spent an entire night getting two flight paths and some reputation. Then begrudgingly turn off my computer. I love this. This is the authentic the day experience, after, man. Though. I oh, rose no. to the occasion and finally started playing with my guildies. You see, our old guild, who shan't not be named, had merged with a couple other guilds to form Prevenge, the deadliest fucking group of lethal Azeroth assassins on the planet. It's actually hella sick to be part of an active guild that actually has their shit together. I even went on Discord with my fellow degenerates throughout our Moradon crusade. I don't look disgusting, <laughs> I look fucking cool, man. Man, you look like a virgin. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> the vast majority of our communications does not fit within the advertiser guidelines, so it has been cut from the video. What you need to know <laughs> is that Moradon is a fantastic dungeon, and Prevenge is absolutely the best guild on EU Noggenfogger, perhaps with the exception of buying GF. But that's neither here nor there. If the people I normally team up with for dungeons are irrede- Wait a minute, why is his EGF in a different guild than everybody else. She's in Heroes of Azeroth. Everybody else is in Prevenge. Is that a little sus? She, she's, she's in a different guild. I don't know if that adds up. Yeah, something, something's a little off there. Why are they in different guilds if they're so close? Esters who are lowly intelligent at best, then my Prevenge guildies are Azeroth guerrilla soldiers. They're fucking raid-hardened World of Warcraft primates. They got this shit on lock. We basically zoom through the dungeon to Princess Theradras. Watch out for the deadly farts. And watch out, she throws a rock. Whoa! Whoa. We kill her in hopes of getting me the Blackstone Ring, which is undisputedly the best ring warriors can wear until several content updates come out. After Theradras, we jump down and kill Rodgrip to try and finesse the Albino Croc skill boots for Amiri, who by the way, was very loyal when my guildies made advances. 
After Rock uh -huh. Rip, we turn our party into a raid party so we can effectively reset the dungeon by logging out and back in. These people knew their shit. We ran the dungeon a handful of times and got me the Blackstone Ring, oh, nice. an absolute powerhouse of an item. Then I asked my experienced, wonderful, erratic, temperamental, assertive, Bangin' Wow GF to show me the world. As per the ancient rituals, the bonding is not complete before she takes me on a journey. When she took me to Don Moreau, I began to suspect that this was a ripoff of the Wetlands run, but I should have known that my trust was far from misplaced. She brought me through the Valley of Kings to a menacing locked gate that leads to the Searing Gorge. Okay. To get the key, one would have to undertake a trilogy of quests, but Emiri is goddamn perfect. <laughs> She's mastered lockpicking and is able to lockpick the massive gate. Sick. Allowing us to ride headfirst into the Searing Gorge, a zone I had only been able to observe from the air. A zone that had always intrigued me. A zone that is absolutely ruthless and filled with horde players, many of which have evidently forgotten to take their ADHD medication. We weren't gonna take it lying down though. The second we saw Nut Buddy, we jumped him. They feared me, leaving me incapacitated, able to only watch them beat up my WoW GF no. whilst I cowered in fear. Extremely disrespectful. When they killed Amiri, it invoked my primal fucking hatred. With pure skill and absolute no determination, I crit Nut Buddy twice, and oh his gosh, I was not expecting his friend that. Bang Doy slows me and flees like the weak coward he is. Intercept. He clearly didn't get the memo that at level 47, I'm a goddamn expert at this game. I use my macro to switch into Berserker Stance, letting me intercept his cowardice. With a clean double proc from my fiery, fiery too, war no axe, way. I stood oh, victorious. Oh my gosh. You better believe Let's we go. camped their corpses. God, I'm glad I picked Night Elf. Stealth, front flips, you move really fast every time you die, a fucking tiger for a mount. Anyone not picking this race are clearly on the wrong side of history. Yeah, <laughs> I would, but you can't be a Night Elf mage. <laughs> wow, Speaking I'm of impressed. being on the That's wrong side dope. of history, yeah. this cunt shamelessly took us out even though he had nothing to do with our kerfuffle. The fact that I would go on <laughs> to kerfuffle. forgive Bang Doi and quest on in peace is a testament to how good of a fucking person I am. We went on to let a guy out of a locked bathroom. I question how we ended up in that predicament in the first place, but when I get over 5,000 XP for little to no work, I don't ask any questions. I just take the progress, turn around, and walk away. This is how you play World of Warcraft. You leave your trusted companion to die so you can loot the scroll for the quest. Get hit with a regularly occurring 20-second um, polymorph. Ah! Once you finally break out of said spell, you focus on what's truly important. The <laughs> goddamn quest. With your priorities in order, it's you nearly complete the quest, no, but no. get interrupted once more. Then, die to the mobs that fear, you could have probably oh. killed had you worked together. Finally, you undergo the walk of shame. We went back to Ironforge to sell some shit, stock up on food, potions, and to level up my abilities. Which, to be honest, I forgot was even a part of the game. Emiri vowed to be my personal alchemist. I got my boy sending me godlike weapons oh, and my girl brewing me potions. My situation is godlike, and most WoW players are not this lucky. She even made me homemade cheese. It was delicious. We teamed up with Larry <laughs> okay. on the second character, which made me feel a little bit iffy about my own progress. Not just had he leveled his gnome warrior to 60, he was also approaching my level on a paladin. Granted, it's the easiest class to play in the game. True. It's basically an Azeroth runescape simulator. If there's one class which is actually just standing and hitting, then that class would be paladin. Yeah. Speaking of, the patents that stand and hit gameplay, I'll concede that I was wrong. Vanilla WoW is not just standing and hitting. You can also jump. That's a whole element that I left out in my previous statements, and I can see now that there's a whole dimension of gameplay that I had overlooked. The third dimension. Anyways, yeah. I quested with Larry and Amiri in the Searing Gorge. We summoned this dragon, I gotta be honest, it's been over a hundred hours of game time since I followed the plotline of this game. Same. I have no idea who this dragon is, or what he does. For all I know, he could be the final boss, or maybe he's our friend. All I know is I don't ask any questions. I take the XP and mm. walk away. I would go on to jump in the lava and die. Naturally, my comrades jumped in as well. To I'm curious what percentage of players read the quests and what percentage of players skip all of the reading, follow questy or rested XP or whatever the hell. I get the XP and level up and just play the game.
Like type one in the chat if you actually read the quest. You you're tuned in on the lore. You know what's going on. You know the the backstory of the quest. Type two in the chat if you are just running through the damn game, clicking as fast as you can to hit max level. Okay, I like ma everyone's saying two. Pretty like uh, mainly twos. Okay, I, I I've pretty much been a two my whole life. I've been trying to dabble on the side of the one um here and there, especially with like playthrough games, but uh it's hard for me, man. We got it. Yeah, we gotta we gotta learn to read. To make me feel better, it goes back to the age-old saying: If your friends jumped off a bridge, would you do it? Well, if you want to be a top shelf certified five-star WoW GF, the answer is yes, no hesitation, with haste, immediately. We then farmed Incendosaurus for XP, finished off a bunch of quests, and then traveled to Stranglethorn Vale to take a shot at the arena chest. Not just is there potentially spoils of battle, but if you actually spent countless hours to loot it and get the Arena Master 12 times, you can turn them in for the Arena Grandmaster Trinket, which is actually half decent. Uh, it's really good, yeah. game, man. <clears throat> the moment the chest spawns, I agreed for it, only to be fumbled ah. by a priest with his cursed spells. I have no idea what they do, but they interrupted my looting. It didn't matter though, because being a group at the arena is so scummy. Having two bodyguards skanking on my behalf, I managed to loot the chest, aka the authentic Asmongold experience, and I make off like a bandit. Nice. To celebrate our absolute victory, we decided to sail out for adventure. Sadly, with my brainlet, lukewarm IQ, and absolute piss-poor hand-eye coordination, I fall off the boat. When it takes off, most people would be surprised to find out that I have access to forbidden knowledge. I merge with the boat and start frivolously skipping the across hell? the water. You fools! You underestimated my power all along! I'm unstoppable! Look at the technique, the grace, the dignity! What all the this hell? time, I faked being a really bad beginner at this game, when deep down, at the very core of my being, <laughs> was actually the greatest of all time, uh... a true legend of Azeroth. I'm actually the fucking champion is what I'm telling you. Do you feel my sheer fucking energy? The spring in my step? Yeah. The glint in my eye? The fire in my belly? What do you take me? He's gonna, like, after the loading screen, he's gonna get stuck. For a goddamn fucking casual! No! I'm the greatest! And then I load into Kalimdor, losing all my momentum. Yeah. Incredibly yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, Along with me, my ego was buried <laughs> at sea. I had dreamed of a glorious <laughs> death in battle with demons, gods, or even drawing my last breath killing horde players. Yet in my final moments, <laughs> he doesn't even try. I'm cold, alone, and I have no one to blame but myself. Moral of the story? Fucking trash, 15 year old game. You can't even boat skip. Literally unplayable. <laughs> and very deep. I like how he doesn't even try to make it to shore. He just swims down after the fatigue is in. <laughs> the waves, betrayed by family. To I mean, it is the most authentic classic wow experience what's cool though is it's not uploaded in 2004 with like terrible quality and like no microphone and whatever it's like peering into a time machine of someone playing wow for the first time in 2004 except this was really released in like 2019 or something or like 2020 maybe so it's like peering in a time machine but with like good quality and like good voiceover and uh yeah